So, I'm going to make a video talking about my uh, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band um, collection, which uh, my collection these days is pretty much on CDs because until 1998 I moved about 30 times. And anybody with a big collection of records knows that that can be a drag, you know? So anyways, I've accumulated a lot of really good uh, Beefheart stuff. Um, I'll say in advance that um, from Spotlight Kid until Shiny Beast, which is a re-recording of the Bat Chain Puller record that the Trout Bass Band played on, but they, they couldn't release it, or they didn't release it. Um, I'm not going to be including Clear Spot, Unconditionally Guaranteed, Strictly Personal, and definitely not Blue Jeans and Moonbeams. Um, those are my four least favorite Beefheart records. I mean, on every record there's a few things that aren't my favorites. Um, but those things there uh, just get increasingly worse um, as I suppose Don's some say uh, cocaine habit began to get into overdrive and he started making uh, decisions like hiring the guy to produce him that would eventually go on to do things like the Doobie Brothers and Van Halen and although it's considered to be like a really well produced <laughs> beef heart record it's barely a beef heart record and that would be clear spot and those other ones forget about it okay it was just nobody was no everybody was asleep at the switch um, but I kind of want to do this as chronologically as I can off the top of my head. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Frank Zappa Lost Episodes CD, on which four uh, rare, I didn't know about them except from articles and stuff, I'd certainly never heard them, uh, songs that, that uh, have Don Van Vliet on them. Uh, the first one, this might be his very earliest recording ever, Frank Zappa Lost Episodes, 1958 or 9, Lancaster, California, with uh, Don Van Vliet singing Bobby Zappa, Frank's brother on rhythm guitar, and Frank Zappa playing lead guitar. It was recorded on a webcore unit, which I believe was a wire recorder. <laughs> And it's basically a blues about a turd going round and round and eventually down a toilet. Kind of infantile lyrics. Um, but you hear that voice. You can hear a guy that's been listening to a lot of blues records and Howlin' Wolf and stuff. And he starts to emerge a little bit there. Uh, the next track on here that's cool is called Tiger Roach. 1962 or 3, recorded at Studio Z. That's where Zappa got in trouble with the cops when they said that he was making uh, audio for porn movies. He wasn't, but anyway, um, that's where the name Captain Beefheart, I think, was sort of birthed because there was this movie called Captain Beefheart and the Grunt People that Zappa and Beefheart were working on together, but, you know, it didn't work. Um, Tiger Roach, uh, another bluesy Holland Wolf kind of uh, rant, you know, a blues rant uh, with angles and stuff. And then there's also on here um, a, a fairly interesting version of, um, what is it, uh, the Grand Wazoo. Yeah, and uh, Don's singing and narrating and uh, Zappa plays Sint Clavier and that one there is from 1969 and 1992, so apparently it turned up on a tape somewhere and Zappa was still living or something and said, hey, let's uh, let's make this into something. So that's the, the earliest, earliest stuff is on this Frank Zappa Lost Episodes. Um, the next CD that, Zapp, uh, that Beefheart put out was called Safe as Milk. It's the one with that fisheye lens there with the band looking right at you and they have pretty short hair for the long hair days that would come. Uh, Safe as Milk, they say that uh, the Beatles really dug this record, that blues guys really dug this record, that jazz guys really dug this record. Um, it was a quirky, psychedelic, uh, short form songs, none of them much longer than four minutes, um, with really fabulous slide guitar playing. 
and I think that's why it stood out. It was just cool songs. Not sure if uh, not sure if Don Van Vliet was writing most of his own lyrics then, or still working with this other guy, who wrote poems. And you know, Beefheart was legendary for not crediting people for the amount of work that they put into his uh, career. But um, anyway, so that's a cool record, mostly popish. Um, a lot of band changes going on back at that time. These guys were like neighborhood and school buddies and stuff. Um, after having played in Battle of the Bands and some regional fair things where, you know, local bands could get up and play. They used to do this in America. Nowadays they don't. Uh, not that much, anyway. Uh, communities supporting local music. But anyway, uh, he'd done kind of good, so he got himself a record deal. Uh, you know, some songs were being worked on. They brought in a very young Ry Cooter. I don't even know if he was 20 years old yet to really pull it all together um, because, um, you know, Don Van Vliet, Captain Beefheart was just a stage moniker, a pseudonym, um, was legendarily disorganized. So he needed people around him to, to pick up the bits on the floor and turn them into something. Um, I think it was around that time that they started doing hallucinogens because it crops up a lot. Uh, this raga-like change in attention to long-form pieces uh, on the record Mirror Man. You can see the darker album cover there with the broken mirror. There's only four songs on it. They're very long. Uh, still quite blues-based. There's a lot of John Lee Hooker style rhythm guitar. Um, uh, T-Bone Walker, maybe a little bit of Hubert Sumlin, um, big, long, everybody's smoking a joint and tripping out kind of psychedelic blues music. Mirror Man's not my favorite record, really. Um, it's great, but it's not my favorite record. And those came out um, in the uh, late 60s. Well, so, you know, you saw that Zapp and, and Beefheart had, had grown up in the same general area. Um, and they knew each other. So, Don had been noodling around with some various producers. Buddha Records was talking to him. Uh, he went in and... Um, you know, occasionally things would happen in the studio that were just, he had an opportunity for somebody to roll tape and pulled in the guys. Um, this record has 11 tunes that cropped up in other places over the course of his career, and it was recorded, gosh, way back in 67, 68, in the wintertime, that winter. Um, Trust Us, Beetle Bones and Smoking Stones, Moody Liz, Safe as Milk, Gimme That Heart Boy, On Tomorrow. These are records, these are tunes that came up showed up on Strictly Personal, some of them, and um, give me that harp, boy, I forget where that was, it might have been unconditionally guaranteed. Uh, another version of Trust Us, a version of Safe as Milk, um, a tune that he was calling Big Black Baby Shoes, another one called Flower Pot, and another one called Dirty Blue Jean, and there was a song called Dirty Blue Jean on Doc at the radar station later on. And I remember in the notes they said that some of these tunes ended up uh, turning into something else on his Ice Cream for Crow record and other things that came along later. So this is a cool compilation of outtakes called I May Be Hungry, But I Sure Ain't Weird. It's good. It's a good uh, sort of for documentary purposes. Well, next thing you know, Beefheart rattles the whole world with the re release of this record. Trout Mask Replica. Completely blue minds. Many groups at that time were being influenced by jazz players. John Coltrane's name came up a lot. And Beefheart got along with jazz cats. Pretty nice package here, actually. Some art, a little bit. Oh, look, there's some more art. Drawings by the Mascara Snake. I believe that was uh, Don's cousin, Victor Hayden. Some sort of UFO looking thing. 
this record is a cacophonous, mind-blowing dose of Dadaism on speed, mostly. Um, no holds barred. No holds barred music that, frankly, derived from a lot of improvisation, but then was structured together in a way where elements of the songs that were in different time signatures or different tempos or even different keys were fit together by members of the band. At first, Drumbo, John French, later Bill Harkle Road, and I believe that even Gary Lucas was doing it at one point later on uh, in the later bands. But everybody hated this record the first time they heard it. Then they probably heard people saying it was really great, and then they sort of felt like they ought to think it's great too, or everybody will think they're stupid, and they went back and listened to it, and I think at about that point they realized it was very amazing. Um, truly a fusion of all of that earlier Delta Blues and Chicago Blues stuff with free-blowing jazz, like uh, Ross on Roland Kirk, your uh, you know, some crazy people, some people like Don Cherry, um, people who were really, really completely unfettered by a single chain, a single creative chain. That's what this record does. It isn't pretty, not a bit, but it's really quite awesome. And it's historically important to a lot of people. After that record, he lost band members. People quit. In particular, Jeff Cotton, who had been known as uh, Antenna Jimmy Simmons. But the band labored on and put out another record called Lick My Decals Off, Baby. Nice Don painting on the back. Lyrics and stuff on the inside. This is what the stuff on Trout Mask would sound like if you shuffled in about a... 30% pop sensibility. A warped one, but a pop sensibility. Um, very nicely recorded in comparison with the uh, lo-fi, the relative low fidelity of the Trout Mask. Um, extremely dense uh, slide guitar, polyrhythmic, uh, dancing bass pieces, quite like on Trout Mask. Um, I think maybe Don was paying attention because he sings with entrainment more on that record than he ever had before that. Let's see here, what else have we? Um, I guess right around that time, um, Zappa asked Beefheart to go on tour with him around 1975. Uh, this is called Bongo Fury. It's one of my favorite Zappa records, actually. It's live. Of course, you know, Frank always took him back in the studio and tweaked things and stuff, but it's great. And it even says here, uh, live plus selected studio wonderment. Um, Don Van Vliet belts on one, two, three, four, five different tunes on here, including Muffin Man, which has got, actually got some airplay. It was a concert favorite. Um, great record. Love it. You know? Zappa, Zappa went to a place that Don could function. I think with those tours and uh, sounds real good. Okay, let me see what else we got here. Okay, so <clears throat> the Magic Band still has, uh, you know, John French, Drumbo. Um, it's still got Art Trip from the Mothers of Invention, but everybody else bails out. And I'll talk about where they went in a minute. So Beefheart needs some new guitarists. So he brings in Jeff Morris Tepper, kind of a punky slide guitarist, uh, credited with playing spell guitar you know, on one, in one place here. Another man named Richard Redus. I've never seen him since. Playing slide guitar, some accordion, some fretless bass. Um, this is where Eric Drew Feldman shows up, and he went on to play with... Uh, Frank Black from the Pixies and stuff, and uh, do some interesting music. So we had a brand new band, right around when punk broke, you know? Um, 
And these songs are really edgy. And for the longest time, um, I thought that this was the greatest Beefheart record of all. Shiny Beast, Bat, Bat Chain Puller. Not many people like this one as much as I do. But it brought me a lot of joy when I was living overseas. Fun tunes. Tropical Hot Dog Night. The Floppy Boot Stomp. Great stuff. Um, he's got pretty much the same band on the record that followed, Doc at the Radar Station. Uh, Morris Tepper's still there. Eric Feldman's still there. Uh, on this one, Drumbo returns to play some drums. Uh, and I believe he's even playing a little bit of slide guitar on here. Let's find out. Gary Lucas guitar. Bruce Fowler from the Mothers of Invention trombone. They called it Air Bass. John French was playing slide guitar, marimba, bass, and drums and drums on here. Eric Drew Feldman, mostly bass and synthesizer. Morris Tepper guitar. Don Van Vliet, Chinese gongs, soprano sax, bass clarinet and his characteristic yelling. There's another Don picture in there. Nice. Doc at the radar station. A lot of people really, really love this one. So do I. It's great. It's excellent. These guys have found their stride. Um, but Don's getting tired of the whole thing. And he had, um, you know, these chronic health issues that made it more and more difficult for him to basically leave home. I don't think he wanted to either. And he gathered together this group of people one last time, I suppose, to fulfill uh, label requirements. And he put out Ice Cream for Crow. Ice Cream for Crow, 1981 and 81 82. On this record, something that was on. That I might be hungry, but I sure ain't weird. Something from that turned into a song on this. I, I can remember that, but I don't remember which tune. Tepper's still here. Gary Lucas is still here on guitar. New bass player, Richard Snyder. Uh, new drummer, Cliff Martinez. And um, Eric Feldman is still playing piano and synthesized bass on here. And this is his very last record. Um, Anton Corbin did a cool music video for the uh, title tune. And then Don retired from music around 1982. Didn't do much after that. I have a CD here called uh, Pearls Before Swine Ice Cream for Crows. It's just poetry being read. But it has a nice booklet in it that talks about uh, quite quite serious book with a whole lot of art in it and uh, documentary information about his life and there was actually some clarity given to the you know the story of who is this guy anyways this Don Van Vliet do um, oh and I forgot all about the spotlight kid yeah oh wait a minute I'll be damned Look at that. Clear Spot is on here with the Spotlight Kid. So this is a double. How about that? Okay, I do have Clear Spot. Of those four records I mentioned, it's the one that sucks the least. Um, it's got some halfway cool songs on it. Spotlight Kid. I love that record. It was actually the very first Captain Beefheart record I ever bought. Look at them all sort of dapper like some lounge singer in a saloon. Uh, it, it, the band never liked it. They said they thought it was really slow and 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 murky. Um, I happen to think the Spotlight Kid record is fabulous. Um, I'm not going to talk about Clear Spot, but anyway, Spotlight Kid came out um, just before Shiny Beast Bat Chain Puller. Okay, so Don's retired. What else has happened? Um, well, my friend Ben Waters, who's that guy in the middle there with the bald head, is a songwriter and bass player who is extremely influenced by Captain Beefheart. And um, his band, The Forefathers, covered a lot of Beefheart tunes. He's in the UK. 
um, while they were together. I think now he's just doing an acoustic blues thing out in pubs and stuff. Um, on this, Rocket Morton. Okay, Rocket Morton. The bass player on Trout Mask Replica and many other Beefheart records. He was over there uh, touring with the Magic Band, I believe, and they got together and jammed. How very cool. I love that. Sometimes ser serendipity smiles and you get to play with a hero, and that's what happened with my friend Ben. Um, so that's quite cool. Um, the Magic Band has reformed in various configurations that try to constitute themselves of people that have been in the Magic Band. And in 2003, they played in London at Shepherd's Bush, an evening with the Magic Band performing selected works of Captain Beefheart. Denny Wally, uh, he was on uh, the Spotlight Kid record, and he was the original guitarist in The Mothers of Invention way, way back. Gary Lucas came on board around um, Doc at the Radar Station and uh, produced him. Uh, Rocket Morton, uh, you know, the original bass player from the band, and Drumbo, the original uh, drummer from the Trout Mask era days. And so they toured. They went to Europe, they toured. Um, I remember reading things about it online. Here we have Moonlight on Vermont, Sun Zoom Spark, Whale, Big Eyed Beans from Venus, um, Dropout Boogie, Orange Claw Hammer, Sure Enough and Yes I Do. I mean, they, they, they did some cool tunes. I've seen videos of it and so can you on YouTube. Check out the Magic Band. Put in Magic Band 2003, see what you find. Great stuff. Um, okay, here's the Forefathers, my friend uh, Ben Waters Band, live. And they, on this one, cover Sun Zoom Spark, Call On Me, When It Blows It Stacks, Ice Rose, Bat Chain Puller, Hair Pie, Alice in Blunderland, Making Love to a Vampire with a Monkey on My Knee, Well, A Carrot is as close as a rabbit gets to a diamond. Yeah, they knew their beef heart. They could do it. They could definitely do it. Good stuff. Check them out if you can find them. I bet you Ben's got copies of this stuff at home. Uh, Fast and Bulbous. This is a Beefheart tribute record. He doesn't appear on it, nor does the Magic Band, but people like XTC, uh, That Petrol Emotion, Sonic Youth, um, and the Beat Poets do show. Oh, and the Dog Faced Hermans, which I think. Lisa Herman and Carl Blake? Could that be their group? These people cover some pretty cool songs. It's okay. It's hit or miss. All of these tribute records are always hit or miss. I've been on some of them. I've been the one that played the really weird one that nobody likes on them. It happens. Um, my North Carolina neighbor, uh, Eugene Chadbourne, used to tour around with Jimmy Carl Black, who was an original member of the Mothers of Invention, and who also did some work um, sitting in with the Magic Band on and again and off and again. Um, this record is called Pachuco Cadaver, and it's the two of them essentially playing nothing but beef heart tunes. Yeah, pretty awesome. Sloppy looking thing, the way Eugene's records always are, but look at those happy guys. Just having a lovely day. Uh, just two guys playing beef heart tunes. Yeah, it's sparse. Eugene Chadbourne, guitar, banjo, voice. Jimmy Carl, black, drums and voice. Plus exceptions where noted. So, you know, there's a couple of guests uh, here and there. I really can't see. I can't read this. Eugene, I can't read this. Anyways, it's really fun. I mean, if you've ever seen Eugene Chadbourne live, you know what it sounds like in advance. It's goofy. If you were there, you'd be seeing all the funny faces and gestures and stuff, and it would have been an entertainment. Wish I could have seen him. Cool record. Um, -bum -bum -bum. Oh, I forgot all about Grow Fins. Yes, the Grow Fins box set, which set me back when it came out here a number of years ago on Revenant. You can see that it has a humongazoid book in it, 
and it has five different CDs and I believe there's video on the fifth one and this is pretty much uh, a deep plummet into the you know the the biography of Don Van Vliet and his various band configurations but it centers around the Trout Mask replica record and how it was made and some you know it has all kinds of stuff that nobody's ever heard before um, you know demo versions of things uh, two-track audio practice rehearsal things uh, neighbors talking I could go on and on um, it's great I don't think this can be had anymore. You can try Amazon.com, but I bet it won't be any less than 200 bucks because they didn't make that many of them, and it's a really high-quality thing. It's great. Love it. Um, several bands sprung from the Magic Band when the Trout Mask era band members went away, okay, before... Uh, Shiny Beast, before Doc at the Radar Station, and before Ice Cream for Crow, the core group, John Drumbo French, Bill Harkle Road, um, Rocket Morton, bass, and um, Jeff Cotton, who was the other slide guitarist. Bill Harkle Road was one, Jeff Cotton was the other. Well, Jeff Cotton was the first to quit, and I think it's because some idiot threw him down a flight of stairs, and he just decided that's it, and he quit the band. He moved, uh, he was on the West Coast. He ended up going and moving to Hawaii and forming a band called Moo, M-U. You know, Moo. It's like another one of those Atlantis or, um, you know, the, the Lost Continent kind of things. There's a lot of myths about these uh, things. And uh, Moo is fabulous. They're the, the first record of the two CDs that are in here, um, fabulous stuff. Really, really good stuff. Killer slide guitar, really good rhythm section, interesting vocals, uh, strange songs with strange time signatures. There's still a very big magic bandiness um, to the guitars and stuff in this record by Moo. It's fabulous. I really, really like it. It was recorded at Hyder Studios in Los Angeles in 1971. There's also a second disc in here which um, is not good. Uh, not as good. It's interesting. I don't know. It sounds like guys playing on the porch. Guys who can play, but you know, they're playing on the porch. Um, the dudes that he's playing with in this group, Moo, um, had been in the band, oh, what was the name of it? The HMS something or another. The guy that was in charge of the group was Merrill Frankhauser, who's credited with having written the song Wipeout, that surf hit from way back in the day. HMS, oh, hell, I can't remember. I'll put it in the notes down below. Anyway, Moo, it's really good. Excellent, okay? Bill Harkle Road, and um, let me see here. Mark Boston, I keep saying um, <laughs> Rocket Morton. His real name is Mark Boston. Um, Bill Harkle Road, guitarist, Mark Boston, bass, and um, Art Tripp uh, from the Zappa Band, who often played marimbas and stuff and percussion and so forth um, formed a band called Mallard and they brought in this guy named Sam Galpin to sing with for them and Sam had been in a band called The Champs who I think recorded that instrumental hit Tequila and who Jim Seals from Seals and Crofts had been a member of when he was a kid in high school it's a really deep tunnel when you chase this rabbit. And Jim Seals, I believe, I heard that when he was nine years old, he got awarded first place in the Texas Fiddlers Convention as the best fiddler in the state of Texas before he was 10 years old. That's why those Seals and Crofts records sound so good. Anyways, Mallard. Um, Mallard sounds a lot like Clear Spot era uh, Beefheart. 
And I told you, Clear Spot's not my favorite record. Um, but their eponymous first record called Mallard, with this train on it, like that, is really good. And it's got some really cool instrumentals on it. And I dare say they even have a version of Peon, which was on Trout Mask Replica, um, on that record, on that first record. The second record, I believe, was uh, paid for by Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull, who was friends with these guys. I think Tull and the Beefheart uh, toured together at one point, and he financed that second record. Um, I think they'd run out of anger that they felt toward their previous situation and by the second record. It wasn't as interesting as the first one, but the first Ballard record is really, really good. Um, and the last one that I want to talk about is the band um, Fraternity of Man, which is the band that Elliot Ingber, who's all over the Spotlight Kid record playing mad improvisational guitar, this was the band that he put together. I think he's like a lifelong vegan, doesn't like to bathe, um, lives real simply, um, smokes a lot of weed. <laughs> I think that's pretty much Elliot Ingber in a nutshell. And everybody's heard the song Don't Bogart That Joint My Friend from the movie Easy Rider. Well, that's the record that it was released on eventually. Um, this is kind of amusing, quirky, Roadhouse music with kind of dumb names to some of the songs like The Throbber, Too High to Eat, Coco Lollipop, Last Call for Alcohol, Candy Striped Lion's Tales, Wispy Paisley Skies, Elliot You've Had Enough. Oh, and they cover the uh, Mothers of Invention tune, Oh No, I Don't Believe It, on here from, um, gee, was that the first or the second Mother's record? Anyways, um, this has been a summary of my Captain Beefheart collection. If you got any questions about this stuff, who's on what record, something glaring that I left out, you can put it in the comments. Um... Don't anybody rag on me about the records by him that I don't like, because I really don't want to hear it. I don't care. Okay? You like what you like, and make a video about it. Okay? Why don't you make a video about those three V-Fart records and tell everybody, you don't have to name my name unless you feel like being a prick, but you can say, I'm putting out this video because this guy said these records suck, and you go ahead and make the video that convinces me to go out and buy them. Okay? But don't rag on me here. I don't want to hear it. Okay? Have a lovely day. I hope everybody is blessed.